Hi all, it's AC Dodd here again, and this time we're going to be working on a project cylinder head. So up on my head bench, I've got a nice MPI cylinder head. This particular one is from ML Motorsport. Um, doesn't look too bad. And what it's in for is a rebuild and also some chamber modifications. As you can see, this has had a bit of work recently, but it's been stored and it's gone uh, rusty. And what the job to do is to go through this head, machine the chambers to increase the volume to get the compression down for the application that it's going to be used for, uh, but also increase the airflow a little. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to port the cylinder head. I'm only going to reshape the chambers, make them a little bit bigger, um, and also fit a larger intake valve, but do a nice four angle valve job. Um, and that way I can maximize the airflow through the cylinder head, get a little bit more power, um, but obviously uh, not go to the full expense of doing a full ported head. All right, let's get this thing taken apart. What I'll do is I'll take all the bits and pieces off and I'll bag up the components. I'll also look at the same time, just a quick visual inspection to see if there's any damage. They'll get more of a, um, they'll get more of an inspection when I obviously uh, uh, get around to cleaning those parts. Um, springs as well, they'll be replaced. Sometimes you get a tight one. If you are going to reuse valves, then I like to store mine in a uh, valve block. In this case, we're going to fit new valves, but uh, it's always best to keep them stored in the way that they come out. Last valve out. Excellent. So, with the valves out, we can see it's got stem seals, but someone's fitted the cheap ones. So, they need to come off. Uh, obviously, this head's not been used yet. Uh, if it would, or if it was, these would have gone hard and uh, most likely slid off. So, what we need to do is when we refit those, we'll use the later MPI type so that they stay soft and pliable and actually work properly. Avoid the cheap stem seals if you want uh, those uh, valves to be sealed. Okay, so now we've got the cylinder head stripped, uh, we need to start having a look at it. And as we can see, it looks pretty reasonable, but uh, first inspection uh, shows that we, um, although this head's been serviced at some point, uh, its valve guides haven't been replaced. So what we're going to do is we'll take one of the old valves and we'll just put them in the guides 
and then we'll see how much play we've got. Right, and then that in this particular case, that is excessive. So I don't bother measuring the diameter, I'll just do a wiggle test. Uh, and that tells me all I need to know is um, the exhaust guides uh, will all be worn. Um, the inlet guides are not too bad. However, as you can see, a little bit of wobble. So I'm going to replace all of those anyway. It's quite normal for the exhausts to wear on these later unleaded heads more than the, in the inlets. And that's obviously to do with the fuel, the unleaded fuel. Um, and obviously the temperature that the valves run at in the guides. So they all need to be replaced. If you want to know our, um, if your valves can go again, you just need to measure the stem seals and obviously look and see how much wears on the uh, on the valve seat. In this particular case, it's just had a light refacing um, by someone else. As you can see, there's still pitting in that seat as well. The other thing we need to look at is uh, wear on the valve stems. Um, and to do this, we're going to use a micrometer. So start off by measuring the uh, unworn part of the valve. So that's right in the middle uh, or uh, the end by the tip before the anywhere where it runs in the guide. And in this case, I think this measures about 279. So I'm just checking the end there. Uh, again, just to check to, to, to see the uh, the um, maximum size. And now I've moved down to the end of the valve where the maximum wear is. And in this case, we've got three quarters, about three quarters of a thou wear. And this indicates that this particular valve uh, is worn out. And actually, when I check the rest of them, they were worn out as well. So um, three quarters of a thou actually means that uh, you're you're pretty much through the um, chrome plating. So uh, once that's worn off, uh, that valve is actually scrap. Okay, so what I've done now is I've got the cylinder head. Um, I've put it up on the bench. I'll give it a quick wire brush off on the face and the chambers. All right, because now what we're going to do is we're going to perform a Magnaflux inspection to... Uh, check the casting um, so what this basically is uh, means is uh, uses a large magnet uh, which is what this is electromagnet and uh, we perform what they call uh, a process called magnetic particle inspection um, and we're going to basically locally magnetize the casting introduce a magnetic powder and that will highlight any cracks in the cast iron all right so let's get it let's get it underway I have to do it you have to do this both ways because the it will only show a, a uh, it will only give you an indication when um, of the crack when it's in this direction uh, uh, between the poles so you have to do it in two directions to find out what's going on so I'll put the powder on uh, and to be fair I'm not seeing any cracks at all in there so um, yeah that's pretty good just so you can see what I'm seeing, just the powder on there. There we go. We've got no cracks in the chambers. Um, there's also nothing showing up on the, around the face of the head as well, uh, which is excellent. So, uh, yeah, this casting, uh, certainly on this side, is good to go. Okay, so I've turned the cylinder head over now, so we're going to do a crack test on the top as well. And around the bolt holes to see if there's any stress cracks. Yeah, 
Again, not seeing anything there. It shows up as a nice line. So yeah, that casting looks good to go. Here's a shot showing how the Magnaflux indicates on this uh, face of this cylinder head where there is a crack coming out of the brass plug. This one shows uh, a typical crack across a valve seat and what it looks like. This last example shows a crack out of a rocker stud hole. Okay, so one of the uh, things that a lot of people overlook when you uh, um, Magnaflux test the casting is you actually turn this into a bit of a magnet. So what I like to do afterwards is just use this little gauge to go around and uh, assess the magnetic field. Now, as we can see there, parts of this cylinder head, um, that wasn't like that before we did it, are now quite strongly magnetic. So leaving that magnetic charge, as you can see, that, that, that kind of... We've got a different magnetic field across the the cylinder head in various different places so that's the worst bit there so leaving leaving it like that means that that particular casting you know this casting will attract bits of metal and things um you know during its use so uh we need to knock that back so we need to degauss the casting before this can actually be used degaussing is nice and simple you use the same tool and uh just do it a couple of times. Especially around where it's strong. And all we're doing is, because this is an AC mains powered magnet, it's just scrambling the magnetic field. So once we've done that a few times, we'll just... Okay, so where we had a magnetic field before, you can see there's a small one, but then on the end now, there's absolutely nothing. All right, that's reduced that down to nothing, whereas before that was burying the needle. Excellent. And the top side we need to check as well, because just because we've done the bottom doesn't mean to say, as we can see there, we've got little bits look on the end there's a little bit of charge there and oh a little bit right on the very tip so we'll knock that back as well see that change there look so we need to uh do a little bit more on the top and again so i've just uh wiped it down again so if we look here whereas before we had a big change from one side of the needle to the other now we've got very little and we go across the front much weaker signal so that's now ideal and that's kind of where you want it okay with that out of the way then we can start uh, doing some work on the casting so uh, before we take the guides out and everything else this is where i like to mark out the chambers uh ready to um uh start machining so what i've done you can see on the surface here i've put some black pen so I can see what's going on. And I'm simply going to use a genuine head gasket. I'm going to place that onto the uh, cylinder head. And line it up with the stud holes as best I can. And then I'm simply going to scribe round the side of the chambers. To give me an idea of where the gasket line is. All right. Now with that done, we're going to mount this on the milling machine now, and then we are going to uh, machine the platforms in here, or the chamber floor or ceiling, depending on which way you want to look at it, and also the side wall here. So uh, I'll show you that on the milling machine. Okay, so we've got the head on the milling machine and I'll just uh, briefly explain what we got here. Um, obviously, uh, we see the marking up that I did and the scribing around the chambers earlier. Um, now I've set the head up so I can machine that out. I've also uh, marked on each chamber the depth of the chamber, um, as you can see there. 
that's in thousandths of an inch. These ones don't vary too much, um, but they will be closer than that when once we've finished. So uh, I've got the machine all centered up over the valve guides. So what we're gonna do now is uh, simply machine down and uh, remove um, the side wall there to increase the clearance around the valves and also uh, set the depth of the chamber. Well, that's it for part one of this video. Um, please subscribe uh, if you don't want to miss the next part or any other of my videos. Um, that's a good way of uh, keeping yourself informed of what's going on. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Thank you very much.